Hello, my name is Bruce. I came out in the 80s, which was definitely a unique time to come out, I think. Um, civil rights were in place. Women's rights were more established. There was more talk about gay rights. You'd hear it here and there. And there were even gay characters beginning to appear on TV. There was a new era, I guess you could say, of equality. People generally didn't think that they had gay people in their own lives, even though most people had a cousin, a brother, a coworker that they knew, they just didn't know they were gay. And those people did everything they could to hide that fact. But growing up at that time, so you don't see anybody gay on TV. You don't have like role models or even like a good context of what it was like to be gay. Seeing like a single gay character on a show like All in the Family when you're a preteen or a teenager, it doesn't really connect the dots for you. Most of what you found out was from misinformation, parents, classmates. You get a lot of bad things. And there was a horrible book that came out, but it was called Everything You Wanted to Know About Sex, But We're Afraid to Ask. This guy just sat in a room and thought up stuff about what gay life was like. I read it. It had more misinformation than I had ever heard, but it didn't make me feel bad about myself. What it did instead was make me think again that I'm not gay. I didn't identify as gay. And I didn't put together the fact that I was attracted to men with being gay. I ended up becoming an exchange student to South America. I was 17 and I had more autonomy there because it was a big city. It was Bogota, Colombia. So instead of having to be driven around by my mom anywhere I wanted to go, I could hop on a bus and go or a lot of places I could just walk to. And so one thing that got my curiosity up was there was a theater, which ironically, as a tangent, I will say, they set up with, you know, what would be considered R-rated movies. But it was next to a cathedral, and they really just wanted to irritate the Catholic Church. So they showed um, some sexually charged R-rated movies. And I went the first time so I could um, hopefully see some um, male nudity. So I go to this and I am scared to death. It was because I was 17 and of course you had to be 18 to get in. And I don't think I looked older than my age at the time, but uh, they sold me the ticket. I went in the experience that I had there. And this is how it kind of tied into everything was that I became aware that the men that were there were there to, um, I think they just fondled each other. There was really nothing hardcore going on there at the time, but they definitely touched each other. I was intrigued, but at the same time, you know, I was in South America and I was blonde haired, blue eyed and very young, and I was not incognito in any way. So I left, but at the same time, of course, I thought about it a lot. And I was kind of like realizing that was pushing me towards the being gay thing, but I just knew I had a lot of curiosity that I wanted to satisfy. So I worked up the nerve to go a second time. And the second time I went, somebody sat next to me and um, actually, um, I guess you could say politely exposed himself, even though you know it was very dark in this type of theater. So I did um, satisfy curiosity, at least just I reached over, grabbed, and I was like, you know, I might as well. Again, got very nervous and left. So the third time I went, I think I was a little bit more emboldened because now I knew the layout and everything. So I decided, well, I'll be bolder, but I'm going to look for somebody that's my age. The person that came up to me was 23 and I was like, okay, I think I'm ready. <laughs> so it's kind of crazy to think now that I was 17 in a foreign country and hopping in the car with somebody that I'd met at a theater to go to a motel. And I think, you know, that I'm lucky to be alive in a lot of ways because of that. But, you know, at the time, we'll just say I was very happy with the outcome. This was towards the end of my year in South America because I was just there for one year. But we did see each other over the course of maybe it was a month or so. And I did get a little bit of a taste of the gay bars and meeting other gay people. And I was, and I realized I was totally comfortable. I was totally at ease. And 
you know, I didn't have to pretend anything anymore. And that was a really big um, moment for me not to, to be around people. And I didn't have to, you know, act like something I wasn't. And I remember he took me to dinner one time and he did ask me a question that kind of caught me off guard just for myself, but he said, how long have you been gay? And I think he wanted to see if I um, tried to play it off as, oh, it's a phase, I'm not really gay, or the old standby, which is I'm bi, you know, no no shade to bi people, you're out there, but so many people would pass off um, being gay as being bi. But I thought about it and I thought, well, I know I've really only been attracted to men. So I said all of my life. And it kind of surprised him, I think, because a lot of people don't come to that realization that quickly, I think. So I left South America and I went back to Tucson. The first hint that I had there was a gay bar there was actually a friend from high school. It was a girl. And she just happened to mention that since we were underage, that she liked to go to this gay bar to dance. And if you lived in Tucson in the 80s, you'll know that it was JT's. So I did at least have a name of it, but I was still like scared to death to look it up or, you know, of course I had no one to ask like, where is this place? And I didn't want to ask her, you know, because again, I was still kind of back, you know, recessing back to being something I'm not. So I was just like, oh, you know, that's nice. But the way I kind of found the gay community in Tucson was again by accident. And this was again by thinking, well, I will look at a picture of a gay man and uh, I should say of a naked man. And I knew that there was an adult bookstore. So I go in and so it's an adult bookstore. It's got a theater arcade. And so kind of the same way the first time around that I realized that men were there for more than just to look at the merchandise um, that they were doing things. That time I wasn't as nervous about it because I definitely wanted to be more a part of the community than, you know, just like a random hookup or something like that. And actually, I remember my first gay pride in Phoenix was in the late 80s, maybe 89. And I don't know if there was even 100 people there. You know, again, there was no internet. There was, you know, nothing, you know, you had to get up and put your shoes on and go out and do stuff if you wanted to get it done. The first time my sister asked, why they were saying I was gay at my job because she found out through her friend because she had a sister that worked with me and I didn't, you know, remember to keep my two lives apart from work and at home. And I think at that point I decided I wouldn't lie about it if I was asked ever. If anybody asked me directly, I decided never to deny it because I always, and I still do, I always kind of think, um, you know, and I hate to say, you know, if anybody sees this, that you're offended, I'm sorry. But if you're gay and you sit and deny it and, you know, people are asking you, you might as well just say it. You know, it doesn't look, you know, it just looks dishonest, I guess you could say. But I decided from an early stage, I would, I wouldn't deny it. I may not necessarily come out, but I would, I would never deny it and start making up stories or anything like that. And luckily I didn't have any bad consequences that way. So I told my sister, I told my other sister who ended up outing me to my mom after I moved away to Phoenix, which I had to do to get away um, to kind of keep again my life separate because I wasn't that willing to come out to my mother yet. She took it, you know, I think initially as a failing, a lot of mothers I think do, especially if they're religious. Um, they tend to think of it as a failing on the mother if your son is gay. You know, like a lot of mothers, she came more and more accepting of it. I actually got into a four-year relationship a few years after that, and she actually was very accepting. She actually really liked my ex at the time. She also liked the fact that I was in a relationship. And I think... You know, I don't know if she worried so much about me sleeping around or whatever, but she didn't tell me until much later that her biggest fear was that if I was out, you know, like in a single type of lifestyle going to the bars, she really worried about me getting gay bashed, which 
And I kind of wish she had told me that earlier on. Because I thought she was disapproving in a lot of ways when really she was more worried about something else, but she didn't want to communicate it. Um, coming out to my father, I thought I was pulling the wool over his eyes for a lot longer than I was. Um, house that I bought with my ex, we bought one together. You know, I tried to pass it off as like, oh, we're just friends that are going in on an investment, but he knew them. You know, so like 10 years went by and I finally came out to him. He's like, oh, I always knew. So it was just kind of ironic that way. And ironically, I thought he would have the worst reaction and he was the one that cared the least. He just was like, whatever. <laughs> so, um, and I think for a lot of people too at the time, coming out and telling someone you're gay was really a big deal. You didn't know how they would react. You didn't know what their background was. And I remember one woman told me, um, of course, she was a lesbian, and she had a very close friend that she wanted to tell, and she was so nervous about it that I remember she told me that they, she had her sit at the kitchen table, and then she turned all the lights off because she didn't want to see her reaction. But coming out to somebody at the time was a big deal, and just saying, I'm gay, you know, you like now, you know, you don't think twice about it because most people don't have a reaction. And so skipping ahead, I guess, to wrap it up, um, I ended up getting married, even though I didn't think that was ever going to happen in my lifetime. And ironically, I married somebody from another country who um, came in under also something I didn't think would happen in my lifetime, which was getting a marriage visa and eventually citizenship. So now I am married, I am out, and I'm just living a normal life like um, hopefully everybody else out there.